Hello friends, welcome to our channel physics for you and today we are going to learn about the Newton's law of gravitation. Okay. So, friends uh, everybody have experienced this law on almost all days right uh, in all kinds of uh, our day to day experiences we are generally seeing this law we are generally experiencing this law whenever we are uh, leaving something from a certain height that will always fall down and it will get attracted towards the center of earth or we can say the surface of the earth but actually it is pulled towards the center of earth right that is what we call the uh, gravitational attraction so that is what governed by a simple law and that law is generally called as Newton's law of gravitation. So, everybody have heard the, that apple tree story of the Newton, uh, Maybe that is true or not we do not know, but yes that uh, if it is happened then that is what the what we can say the initiation or ignition of the Newton or uh, Newton's mind how that apple falls from uh, that tree to downward why it went go or why it um, does not go to the upside why it only comes to the downside why it uh, only falls on the earth surface that is what the uh, question may be arises on Newton's mind and he has uh, done something or he has uh, developed this law and we call it as Newton's law of gravitation right. So, so what actually the statement of this law or in general we know that if we have two masses right what actually this law states that if m1 and m2 are the two masses which are separated by the distance which are separated by the distance r let us consider now let us see these are the two masses m1 and m2 we are not saying exactly m1 is equal to m2 whatever whatever may be their masses the different masses and these two different masses which are separated by some source distance r are always attracted towards each other are always attracted towards each other that means one thing is uh, one thing is uh, what we can say compulsory or necessary to have this uh, attraction or gravitational attraction is that mass that body must possess the mass right if you have mass then you can experience the gravitation or gravitational force or gravitational attraction. So, that is the compulsion or we can say the compulsory thing even if you are at the rest, but if you have mass then also you can experience the gravitational force not necessarily you should be always in motion, but the necessary thing is what mass we can say the necessary is what mass mass is necessary if you want to experience the or if you want to study the gravitational force. Right. So, what we are saying that this particular body is exerting force on this body and at the same time this mass m2 is also exerting force on m1 and due to that we have some gravitational attraction of both these body towards each other towards each other and yes that is what we call the gravitational force that is what we call gravitational force right if you want to find the force due to this we can call we can write this as f12 or if you want to find force due to this then we can find or we can write f21 but surprisingly the magnitude of both these forces are exactly same or is exactly same that means and that magnitude is only given by the newton's law of gravitation this law only tells about how much is the force between these two masses between these two bodies moreover that force is called as gravitational force ok right. So, what this law state that the force we call it as the gravitational force the gravitational force between any two masses is directly proportional to I will write the gravitational force as F suffix G that stands for gravitational force. So, the gravitational force between any two masses is directly proportional to product of their masses product of their masses that means the multiplication of mass m1 into the mass m2 that is what I said initially the mass is a very important factor whenever we are learning the gravitational force right. So, what generally if you want to find the magnitude of this gravitational force how much is the force then according to this Newton's law firstly the gravitational force is directly proportional to product of their masses and secondly the gravitational force the same gravitational force is inversely proportional to 
the separation between those two masses inversely proportional to the separation between those two masses or we can say the directly proportional to reciprocal of the separation between those two masses or the distance between those two bodies right now if we, if we combine we can write combinedly this as let us i will write here so how to write combinedly the gravitational force then combining both the equations or both these particular statements we can write this is directly proportional to m1 m2 divided by r m1 m2 divided by r just we have combined that two statement and in which one uh, in first statement we found or the newton stated that the gravitational force is directly proportional to product of their masses and inversely proportional to the separation between them right moreover the square of separation not only separation i'm sorry not only separation the square of separation okay square of separation right so we can say it is inversely proportional to the square of distance between those two bodies now combining this we can write this as and the, the we know that this is a proportionality sign and this proportionality sign we can remove with the help of with the help of a constant right proportionality we can remove with the help of a constant and that constant we know that that is called universal universal gravitational constant and which is denoted by g so if we just write that equation f is equal to g into m1 m2 divided by r square that this thing as it is only to remove this proportionality sign newton has multiplied with a constant he named it as z and that constant is known as universal universal gravitation constant gravitation constant or gravitational constant right now this constant uh, as we can say it is a constant that means it has a fixed value and that fixed value is nothing but that g is equal to 6.67 into 10 raise to 11 right 6.67 into 10 raise to 11 moreover it is newton meter square plus or per kilogram square newton meter square per kilogram square okay now how this g value we can write or what actually the g is nothing but we can find or how we got this unit of g that is newton meter square per kilogram square okay so that we will see so how to write that simply now see i will just rearrange this equation we, i will make the box this is what our final gravitation law f is equal to g into m1 m2 divided by r square that means if you have two masses which are separated by some distance r and we want to find how much is the force or more or the magnitude of force between them simply substitute the value of m1 substitute the value of m2 then substitute the value of r and yes the g value and whatever may be the thing whatever may be the constant whatever may be the number that is nothing but force and we know that that force is measured in newton and moreover that is our gravitational force okay but yes if we rearrange this equation and i can write this as g is equal to g is equal to just bring that f here f as it is bring this r square to this side r square divided by and this m1 m2 are in denominator okay right more or yes it is minus 11 not minus 11 okay not that much uh, uh, what we can say the bigger number but yes that much smaller number the value of g is 10 raise to minus 11 okay now see here what i am saying how much how we have found this unit for this so force is measured in newton this r yes let us consider uh, in mks unit it is meter so meter and it is square newton meter square divided by m1 yes in mks we measured in kilogram and second m1 m2 we can write yes it is also measured in kilogram so it is simply newton meter square and per kilogram square so that is what we can say the unit of our g unit of g right now how to define that g how to define the g or universal gravitational constant see here again if you see this equation 
what is actually the g it is nothing but the force force more or gravitational force between two masses now let us consider i am considering this as 1 kilogram this as 1 kilogram and the separation is also 1 meter okay let us consider this r value is 1 meter this m1 and m2 are 1 kilogram i will write here m1 is equal to m2 is equal to 1 kg and r is equal to 1 meter then what will be the value of g then g is equal to c f as it is right r square 1 meter square so 1 meter square divided by 1 kilogram square and this force is measured in newton right so newton meter square per kilogram square is here but what actually if we, now this all values are 1 1 1 so let us forget about this and what actually it is it is g is equal to f so finally what we get g is equal to f g is equal to f so what we can say or how to define g g is nothing but but when we got this g is equal to f with the condition and what are those conditions these are the conditions m1 is equal to m2 is equal to 1 kg and r is equal to 1 meter that means what when we have two masses more or two masses with unit mass or we can say two unit masses separated with the unit distance then whatever may be the gravitational force experienced by that mass that is nothing but the g that is nothing but g s yes, g is equal to f so what we can say the g gravitational constant is nothing but the force it 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 itself is a force but provided m1 m2 must be 1 and the distance or the separation between those two masses also must be 1 meter we can say unit right whether it is in mks unit or cgs unit uh, we can write it unit so if two unit masses separated by the unit distance and whatever may be the force experienced by that mass one of the mass that is nothing but the g value that is universal gravitational constant okay friends so yes this is what the final we got how to define g but actually g is nothing but f and with respect to these conditions only right and therefore ultimately we can say g is also a force but with some specific conditions with m1 equal to m2 that is equal to 1 and r is also must be 1 okay so this uh, this is what we can say uh, the basic idea regarding the newton's law of gravitation so if you want the statement in words so statement we can say any two bodies attracts each other with a force which is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of distance between them that is what the statement okay so since this statement is not important not important means understanding is important that's why i have not written the statement here but if you want once again i will say statement how to uh, write or how to remember the statement of newton's law so yes whatever we have written here that is only in uh, the words format we can say so how to write the statement any two masses attracts each other or we can write uh, according to the newton's law of gravitational gravitation any two masses attracts each other with a force with a force which is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of distance between them this is how we can write the statement of newton's law of gravitation and whatever we have seen here in this order firstly this then and this and finally we reach up to the g must be equal to f or g can be equal to f only if uh, these conditions are uh, satisfied okay that is what only for our understanding purpose how we can express g how we can uh, define g okay right so yes guys this is all about the newton's law of gravitation and yes if you have any doubt you can post in the comment box otherwise if you feel this is value addition to your knowledge then like our video share with your friends subscribe to our channel and yes keep learning and take care thank you